Well, I'm back here. We've got to keep coming. We've got to keep trying it. Because you never know. I'm the only one there. And I might just find those codlin, mightn't I? So anyhow, this is where I'm at. Got me rod today. And uh, you'll be seeing that very shortly. But I'm going to sit on my box, set my rods up, bring you back. Don't turn off yet. At least watch it for a couple of minutes. Let's cut for the intro. on my feet. That's the first one, eh? I don't know if I'm in shot or my arm's in shot, I don't know. I'm uh, a bit tight for space, really. Right, where's that? Still over there. you notice the difference in the rods? I'll show you in a minute. Right, that's both out. It's just got a bit of squid on them because that's the only thing I could cut because everything else is frozen. I've got to swap my coat round, put my heated jacket underneath my hoodie. Um, but yeah, let me show you my rods. So, well, they've both got red butts. They've both got spin fisher reels. But we have got two TF 5050s with the same stickers. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. And I'll tell you more. We've even got, now this is my original one. It's got that bit of narky bit, but I'm gonna rub that and varnish that. You'll not see it then. And this one's got a couple of little minor scratches, but this is in far better condition than my original. So one, my original is whipped in blue and this one's whipped in red. With the same trim bands and everything, but I think they are absolutely spot on. We've even got very similar white tape at the top so i've got they both got the fuji bnhgis i think they are or bng whatever same size same everything um the only thing difference is the weapons which i really like because it just means i can tell the difference between the rods um i'm going to put new shrink tube on i'm going to give them a rub over and I'm going to give them, uh, yeah, have another look. I know they're old Ziplexes, but that don't matter. That don't matter because they are fantastic rods. I would say as good as any rod um, on the market today, probably. If you gave that to a proper caster, it'd send it out hundreds of yards, hundreds. <clears throat> and the other thing is, Ignore the marks, but both blanks are that olive goldy colour. So, um, 
I can't believe it. I've got the same rods, the same make, the same model, and the same blanks, you know, with the same colour on it. Um, thank you very much, Billy. Um, one of my subscribers, he's watched me channel for ages, and uh, he contacted me with pictures, and I said, it's for sale, is it? And uh, he told me how much, and I bet his hand off, because, um, yeah, I can't, both those rods cost me £150 each. So to buy a fishing rod, a Ziplex, now I know it's an old model because of the sticker. The sticker dates it. But those TF5050s, I think they were made for quite a while. Um, I'll ask the question on the Ziplex Facebook page. They'll tell me. Um, but absolutely cracking rods. I came across the first one that I've been using quite a lot and i really liked it and i bought it because it's 150 quid because that's the perfect money for me and and then billy contacted me and he wasn't going to sell it he weren't going to use it anymore um but he heard me in one of my videos say i'd love to have a second one of these and because it, the other day the video that isn't up yet where i'm fishing the low bays at immingham i took both for sellies on the second trip and I appreciated having the same rod on the rod rest because they act the same in the wind and everything else so I really appreciated that and at that moment I was it was all lined up to get the get the rod um, there was a bit of hoo-ha with the pickup service but that was the fault of the delivery drivers they are what they are but I got it in the end there was times, I must admit, there was times when I was curled up in the corner of the front room that I'm decorating in that rentable house, shaking and just quivering, not knowing what I was doing with my life. That's where I was at those moments when the delivery man went to the pickup and went to the wrong house and just sodded off, you know. <laughs> now, it was a good wait. And by that I mean I knew I was getting it, but I couldn't wait to get it because I was so excited. And this is the first time I've come fishing with it. And when I picked the first Ziplex up, I thought to myself, great, it's fixed bill. I, I didn't think it was great at first. I do love my multipliers, but I needed a different set of rods for the river. And these are 13 odd, well, a four meter, I think, whatever, four meter, yeah. So, I got the first one, and then the second one came, materialised. So, thank you very much, Billy. That's much appreciated, and I appreciate the fact that you uh, gave me the option and let me buy it, and you were so helpful with packing, packaging it up, so helpful for waiting in for the delivery driver. Um, you just made me very, very happy. So, uh, I still get sad, I still get moody and grumpy, but you made me very happy and to be here today using these two rods and looking at them it's great i will be changing the grips um i have bought some grips but i don't know if they're red enough if you know what i mean but we'll see i might put them on because i bought them and i'll just take the slava from uh, matt casters fish in wales because i know what he's gonna say but i might just put them on anyhow just just so because the wheels always turn into sometimes you're at the top and then you find you're at the bottom but no it's fantastic i can now go fishing with two facelis which are four and a half meter or 4.2 i think they're four and a half or i can use these ziplexes tf 5050s but it's absolutely i mean how can you fall on two rods the same color blank which isn't black so it is quite a rare colour, I think. Well, it's not rare, it's just an old colour. Um, they're exactly the same. And the fantastic bit about it is one's blue and one's whipped in red. So that it's great because, oh, it's just great. So yeah, that's uh, lighting me up. And I've needed today because today I've been, oh, I forgot to do my thing, didn't I? Yeah, bollocks. Never mind. 
Yeah, I've been working and working and working, and last night I come home and I'd had enough. And uh, I needed a break, and today's the day. I think Mike is fishing at Easington today, but he gets there at like eight or seven, eight in the morning. I'm still at work then. Um, I literally didn't get air until what? Um, about, probably about half past 12, 20 to one. High tide's about quarter past 12, half past three. Quarter past 12, half past three I think. But yeah, we're fishing the River Humber. Today is the 7th of March. It is 1.32. In the afternoon, there is a slight gap in the window, as in the fact Monday and Tuesday was sunny and was nice. Today is a little bit, a lot overcast and windy, but tomorrow it's blowing 30 mile an hour all the way through to Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I think it forecasts rain. So I decided to come today, and I'm bloody glad I have. So, uh, this is a welcome break. Um, refresh my mind and just relax. I'm gonna have a sandwich in a minute. Should have fish paste with cucumber. I'm spec I'll open the tin foil up and be totally disappointed and I'll have cheese and pickle. So yeah, absolutely great. So thank you, Billy. I appreciate everything you did. Oh, oh! How can I forget? Do you know how I got the rods from my mate Billy to, uh, I'll give you a clue, to Caster. Yeah, my mate Mike at Caster Tackle. I uh, gave him a tinkle because I sent a rod once and it cost something like 40 odd pound, 50 pound to have a rod delivered. And I said to Mike, is there any way you can uh, pick me a rod up? And he said, yeah, I can. It was dirt cheap. So, um, because he sends so much stuff out, doesn't he? But I didn't know whether Mike could pick stuff up as well as deliver. So, um, thank you very much, Mike, for getting the rod picked up and delivered to your house, sorting all that delivery out. Um, just let me out know when you get the bill in, how much it is. And thank you for the cup of tea that night when we picked it up and the big long chat. Um, bit of a night out for me and the missus. Don't get much more than that nowadays. Our disco tech days are gone, I'll tell you. So we went around much for a cup of tea and picked me rod up. And then I think we got pizza on the way on. But yeah, so much crap going on in the world, isn't there? And then you have a little bit of joy um, buying a fishing rod. And uh, if you want to buy a fishing rod and you're out there contemplating, shall I buy it? If you're still gonna be able to put food on the table, by the rod so um, it's a short journey on this planet very short and uh, you're a long time in that wooden box so if you can afford it and no one's gonna go hungry and you can put the electric and gas on get yourself a fishing rod if it makes you happy it can be any rod can't it don't have to be a ziplex or some new rod just go to the I would say antique shop, but used to be not junk shops, did they? Because you don't get them sort of shops that we used to get in the 70s and 80s, did you? You used to go into like a hardware store and in the section in the corner there'd be um, used equipment that you could buy for a couple of quid or a few quid, 20 quid, 30 quid now probably. Anyway, it's not too cold today. The wind is blowing. I've got the shelter set up this way. We are looking at them rods. Can you see them rods? Yeah. Um, I put a reel seat. I had two reel seats. As you can see, that reel seat is different down there. That reel seat on the new, on the red TF, is um, that's a sentry reel seat. Um, it's the only one that would fit that rod. I put my dot because the one closest is the Daiwa Kenzaki reel seat. And that fits on that one. But the shrink tube must be thicker on that one and I couldn't get it on. So I, I, I jiggered about with it and got it on the full width of the 
length of the rail seat couldn't get it off could I? couldn't move it no more so I had to cut it off and throw it in the bin and then I managed to find that one so it's got a clip on it but I need 26 millimeter inside diameter rail seats so uh, I'm gonna buy a couple tonight because I'm making a rod bag for that I have got one of these proper Ziplex padded bags but I want it in a cloth bag because it don't them padded Ziplex bags are too thick and big so sorry about looking at that real seat for all that length of time but you could marvel at the pen spin fisher live liners they're a cracking reel and all there's a few boots coming in I'm gonna have to put this heated jacket on the inside and I think I might even plug it on now it's only a short session today I think um, half three, half four, half five so by about half five, six o'clock I'll be packing up so it's not so bad I'll be on for seven well, half seven probably got a fisherman down there remember where I used to fish on this mark right down the bottom there on the point down there he's fishing down there so wouldn't it be a sod wouldn't it be a sod if he catches an eye blank it don't matter I'm out today just to have a Get some fresh air, do some fishing, use this new rod to me. And, uh, and, um, yeah, have some fresh air. It's not about the catching. Be nice to catch, don't get me wrong. Would be nice to catch. But that only happens to on the rare occasions. We're on two blanks at the minute. Will this be in blank number three? I don't know, I've got small looks on. Well I've got size one looks on. Um oh, I've got twos with me and I've even got some fours with me, so There's always a lot of emphasis put on blanking, isn't there? I don't know why. I mean, it's nice to catch, isn't it? Don't get me wrong. It is nice to catch. It's not a be-all and end-all. We actually come out to go fishing, don't we? Well, I do. Right, I'll bring you back when I bring the first rod in. I'm gonna have a sandwich now and a cup of tea. Well, a cup of coffee. See you in a bit. Right, well, that's the first battery dead. I've just been sat on this box, falling asleep. Lent against this side because I started falling that side. Uh, I am absolutely worn out and tired. I've got stuff to talk about in my opinion <laughs> I'm just chilled out at the minute and uh, I just want to I just want to um, enjoy being there 
I don't know if it's raining. I think I can hear rain. Trouble with these batteries is they're getting old, you see, I have to charge them up while I'm here because of the temperature, because it's so cold. So that's on charge now. Got a battery pack. Um, it's an anchor. Anchor, I said. There's too many anchors in politics, isn't there? There's too many anchors everywhere, I think. But yeah, I've got an anchor um, power pack. Um, I've got my hand warmers on. It has turned cold. It has gone gloomy. Um, it always was going to be in the on the weather. It ain't raining, which is good. Longer that stay away, the better. But it is meant to be raining now. It said 20% chance of rain. But it is cold. It is windy. You can see by the shelter. It ain't terrible. It's going to be 30 mile an hour tomorrow. Ass. I've fished 30 mile an hour winds and I, I just don't want to do that anymore. Um, it's 8 degrees. Feels like... Well, I don't know what it's supposed to feel like. It's going to get down to 7 degrees by the time I pack up. Which isn't too bad. I'm going to put my uh, Reed's jacket on in a minute. Smock, coat, whatever you want to call it. It's bloody lovely. Um, and isn't that the best sort of... Uh, review, isn't it? You actually buy this coat which I have and I'm just happy with it so I'm quite happy to say that I'm happy with it it is bloody brilliant but it is a bit chilly I'll tell you that for nothing you can have that one on me so I'm a great believer in getting the gear on before you start getting too cold because even with my heated jacket on I feel chilly and I think it's just the wind blowing through. This stops the wind blowing through, stops rain, stops everything. The more layers I put on, even fatter I look. And, uh, oh yes. Plenty of that to lose, haven't we? Some more than others. Get them heated warmers in there, because this is all, um, got a thermal lining in this pocket so sort me out it always feels terrible glasses that'll keep sticking me in the face now won't it yeah got me in the eye then the only problem probably should have longer string for when I'm fishing get these in there and this oh ah, lovely alright now then should warm up now. If I put the bottoms on, I'd be roasty, roasty, toasty, toasty, rather than just roasty, toasty. But I've got me um, thermals on, that reeds as well. But um, yeah, it's not too bad. But it might be eight degrees, but it probably feels like four. And as soon as you get below five degrees, you might as well stay at home and sit in the fridge, aren't you? And there's enough on me. I've just had a chat with my mate John on the old dog and bone. And uh, he's making rigs. Nothing new there. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do with these, uh, what I'm gonna do with these uh, rods is I'm gonna change, I don't want to, but I'm gonna change the shrink tube. It'll either be red, pink, or black. And then as soon as spring comes and there's a sunny day, I shall get these in the shed, give them a rub down on the butt sections only, 
and give them a lick of bonder seal to make them look like new and then uh, bonder seal the tops just to give them a freshen up because the only thing that's wrong with them is there's a few marks and scratches on them which you would expect with the age of the rods um, I'm chuffed a bit, I really am. I'm gonna, yeah it's not raining, forecast rain but it ain't raining yet. Oh dear, let's have a quick look at the weather. Ten percent chance of rain all through the night. I can feel a little bit of water on my face. <coughs> We're at 22, 23 mile an hour guts at the minute. And at seven o'clock it drops to 20. But yeah, I would put my bottoms on, but it's a bit hard work. I need to do it in the van. Feels heavy. Just weed, lots of weed. I might have to put heavier weight on because that won't hold the bottom.
the bait is still on the hooks I'm looking at someone right down there um, the baits are still on the hooks so uh, I'm gonna put some black lug on now and squid and get it chucked out so uh, I'll bring you back when I've done that I'm gonna stick a seven ounce weight on as well and I'm gonna hull it out over there so see you in a bit Over here. We'll cast it. Oh, yeah. Bugger! We'll cast it short. Let me take this slack up and remove you. I'm struggling today um yeah when I wheeled, wheeled the veil arm round it went too far I should have just moved it round to get it in the right position um, when I let go of it um, it sort of like stayed hooked around the side of my finger As a matter of fact it's twinged the side of my finger even through the glove so um, yeah that went low and short at 200 mile an hour. That should be all right. We'll try one in short. Next one, make sure you put the bail arm in the right place, Vern, so it's not, but there, uh, basically, it's my fault. So yeah, I had quite a few things to talk about, but um, when I got home from work this morning, I was a bit lethargic and uh, I don't even know if I wanted to come fishing. But I'm right chuffed I'm here now. And I'm right chuffed I'm using these two rods, so it's the main thing. It is choppy out there now. It is a bit gusty. It's gusting up to 20, 22 mile an hour in a couple of hours time. And it is chilly, cold. But I've got my hand warmers, got my jacket on, heated jacket on, so. I think we'll be able to put up with it. Everything will be roasty. Now, will we catch today? Hopefully we will. I think I'll save my... Uh, I ain't in the right frame of mind. I need to say this, don't I? We're at 5,000 subscribers. Um, my video... Before my video, last night's video went out, I was on 5,013. I ain't been shouting about it. Because you can lose 12 or 13 subscribers in a blink of an eye. But um, yeah, we're at 5,000, so that's good, isn't it? It's been a long road this last year. I know what I now say, oh, listen at him, he's moaning and groaning, because I aren't. I'm at 5,000 subscribers. Like I say, I was at 5,013 before my video went live. And then uh, at midnight last night when I checked, I was at 5,012. <laughs> that's YouTube for you. But yeah, I think it was, Last year after my COD run, I picked up loads of subscribers then. And I think in April, when I caught the eel and two flounder, or two eels and flounder, whatever video that was, I was at 4,600. And I thought by Christmas I should get to five, but I didn't. So it's took from April to now, 7th of March, to pick up 400 subscribers. It's been it's been a long road, but when your ma might, I might turn some people on, but I turn plenty others off. 
but I ain't bothered. It's just good to get to 5,000, it's an achievement, or it feels an achievement. Feels an achievement. But the main thing is, I get good views. I do get good views from the channel. I expect there's probably 60 odd percent, 62, I think it was 65 percent last time I looked at that weren't subscribed. And uh, I was talking to, well, Brett was talking to me, and he said that it seems as though that's the norm. So, who knows? I'll tell you what I would like to know, is this sun comes out because it'd make it feel a lot better. So yeah, thank you everyone that's subscribed, who watches the videos and don't subscribe, it's fine. And uh, leaves thumbs ups and uh, comments, it's good. I can't wait for spring. We've got another 14 days to the first day of spring. And be able to put your potatoes in then and get your tomatoes started. Um, beat the frost. But hopefully, hopefully them sunnier, warmer spring days will come. I love them. Absolutely love them. Now there's not much tea making in this in this fern sea fishing, but there is plenty of coffee poured out of a flask. So I'm thinking about getting a little tiny fry pan, one of them that those carp, I think they're called carp fishermen, what they use. And um Al has had one, um Woody's got one, and they do lovely cooking in them pans. So I thought I might get one. I've got uh, gas stoves and stuff to bring, but it's just more weight into it. And then, what, you, what do you tend to eat? You normally eat sausages, and they aren't good for you to eat sausages all the time, are they? But, do a burger, I suppose, can I? Them burgers that Keith cooked me at Bay 18, they were lovely. One of them broke up, I said, I ain't having that one, that's yours, mate. <laughs> but they were nice. It is nice doing a cook, but in weather like this, it don't really uh, get me excited. But when you eat it, it's exciting, isn't it? Oh. So yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I'm not gonna go on and, I'll tell you what I will say, because this, this, has, this did jar me off coming here today. And I could go into a long, long moan and groan about it, but I will do that another day. But coming here today, I had two, I can only class them as twats in cars. So in even the two wheeled variety, these are four wheeled variety twats. And you know the sort, you're doing 60 and they're doing 40 and 45 well 40 round the bends 40 to a junction 45 elsewhere and you can't get past and you're just pulling your air out it's absolutely does me head in i had two of them idiots today coming here but i held it together i actually well i missed two opportunities to get past and i thought oh, too much of a rush and i was sat behind but I voiced my opinion through the window screen. I'll, I will say that. I did let myself down there. But it's all right if people want to drive like that, don't they? But there's more of it happening. And it's all, it seems as though, see how I'm going on now, isn't it? But it just seems as though people's attitudes uh, to driving has changed vastly. These Sunday drivers that used to just get out on a Sunday in the 70s, literally on a Sunday, they seem to be every day of the bloody week now. And it'll be through passing the test and it'll be through people's views and this, that and the other, but people don't go through gaps anymore. People don't, uh, if you ever take someone now, you get looked at, what's he doing? He's on the other side of the road. 
But yeah, I just wanted to mention that, it just come in my head. But I've got a much more of a an opinion to make on that, I'll tell you. But I'm not feeling it today. I'm feeling it as in I'm here enjoying myself in the fresh air, getting cold in this wind. Um, hopefully gonna catch a flounder because we can't have three blanks. But that's what I'm feeling today. I'm just here to enjoy myself and I'm enjoying myself. You might look at it and say, is he enjoying himself? He don't look as though he's enjoying himself, but I am enjoying myself, I'll tell you. You know, it don't get much better than this in an igloo on a cold riverbank in 22 mile an hour gusts. I'm watching these rods. I should get another rod in a minute. Squid today, oh, uh, squid today. Bait today is squid, black lug. I brought a bit of carp and some prawns. I better go get a bucket of water in a minute because that might bring a fish on. In fact, Oh. <clears throat> Let's go get the water now. There you go. That's the water got. Might catch a fish now. But yeah, lovely day. And uh, it's always good to have a bucket of water. It's not just for match fishermen. Yeah, I get a good third of a bucket of water because I ain't got to carry it down a beach. So I can have plenty of water in there. Not just two inch. Um, I love them Tronics Pro buckets. I've got another one at Umma Spare. I nearly bought another one last night because one day they won't make them buckets. And that they concertina down and I put my bait bag on top of it and a bungee cord on top of my box. And that's how I carry it to the beach. And now I bring it air as well on my trolley. So it's all good. And then I tie it, as you can see, I've hooked it round my rod rest and uh, it just acts as a weight. Because you never know, there might be a 30 pound cod in here. It would certainly be cold, really cold, if you don't have a beach shelter. Um, I couldn't get to Immingham to fish the bays in time 
um, with the, what, what time the tide was and with me working and getting my gear ready so I decided to come here bit of a walk but it's not too bad if I can manage it with my hip then uh, most other people can I think it's time. I don't really want another coffee, but I'm gonna have to have one. Take some painkillers. So I'll bring you back when I bring the uh, blue rod in. Um, that'll be the next thing I do. See you in a bit. All right, let's get that rod reeled in. I've baited up another rig. It's a two at flapper again. I don't see that there's gonna be any cod air. I haven't got any cod bait. I ain't got any nice yellow tails. Um, they're thin on the ground, unless you go fishing at the weekend. But the weather this weekend is 30 to 32 mile an hour guts. It's gonna be cold, and it's gonna be other cars like this and possibly raining. So it don't really relish me going out to buy yellow tails to fish at the weekend. And by the time during the week come, they're gone. They soon go because it's such good bait. So this year's been a bit hit and miss for me, really. They're obviously selling more bait. If you want to buy any bait, you want to order bait. Um, just phone up Squids and Bait. Chap's name is Scott. You can find him on Facebook under Squids and Bait. And as long as you book your worms, order them, and pick them up, normally at a weekend now, I believe. Um, yep, you can get good bait, cracking bait. He looks after them individually. It's a great chap, sells good bait. Buys frozen bait there as well. Yeah, just don't work around me at the minute because I don't like fishing at a weekend. I don't mind fishing at a weekend, but this weekend it's crap weather and I'm too old to go out fishing in crap weather. This is borderline now for me. But we're giving it a good go today. You never know what's about out there, do you? If you've got fresh bait. Gives yourself the best chance. There might be that lone fish out there. And uh, it'll only bite on some yellowtails. But yeah, go check out squids and bait. I've got the other line. plastic round there and it had tied my lines together.
Bullets. No, you fucking arsehole! Fuck off! God knows what's happened there, apart from it's a total mess. Right. Talk about a total tangle up. Done it again, ain't it? That was that shitty cast I did. Yeah, it went out two foot, 200 mile an hour. But we caught a fish. We've caught a fish. So I'm gonna get that unhooked now. I'm gonna get that unhooked and I'll give you a show. I'll calm down. I've got, I'm not fishing now. Got all my flipping gear in. I've got two rigs in there. They're tangled up to fuck. I'm gonna have to put two new flipping rigs on. Bollocks. I haven't been fishing for 22 days. 22, 14, 22 days. Soon lose your skills, don't you? See you in a bit. Right. I can't untangle them rigs. Got to bait it up. Got the fish off. Let's get this rod out. So we've got one fishing at least. And this time, get your bay lamb in the right spot then. Brilliant. At least that was casting properly. Right. This line will be all the way. I'll be amazed if I get this in. I've got it in. Brilliant. So, let me check on that. Oh, what's that then? Oh, it's my ring. So I've reeled that all the way in. Brilliant, I've got it in. Do you know, I hooked it round there and I've reeled it from there all the way round so the line will be scrapped. So it'll be scrapped all down that, so I'll have to check it. But we'll do that when I get on. Now, my rigs, here's my rigs, two rigs there. I'll take the bait off and I shall just cut that up. Um, or will I? Let me have a go. What I'll do is first, what I'll do is the first is let's just check us recording. 
Right. One flounder. So uh, the pretty flounder unhooked, went through the top gill, then had to go through the bottom gill. Got it out. Didn't want to open its mouth though. So I'll get that chucked back now. Well, got ourselves a flounder. A little bit stressed with tying the rigs up. I might have a go at untangling that actually. Um, if it looks too bad, I'll just get another rig out, bait up. And next time you see me, I'll be casting the rod out again. And we're not gonna get entangled up this time. I'm gonna send the other one out that way. If it had gone as far as I wanted it to go, it'd have been all right. But obviously and clearly it didn't because I balls to cast up bail arm was too far around and it felt all funny on my finger and like I say it pinged off the side of my finger it hurt my finger and that was with a glove on I was close to us I was close to crying and go running for my mum but that ain't gonna happen so chaps are down there fishing I haven't seen if I've pulled anything in but then I can't really see from here and I haven't been looking either so as long as they have a nice day's fishing, that's the main thing, isn't it? I am, and I am blank, so it's always a bonus to catch a fish, and it makes it worthwhile, and that was a nice, fat, plump flounder, so... I'll get these untangled, or put a new rig on. As a matter of fact, I'll put a new rig on, and then untangle them, and see what they're like. If they're shagged, then they'll go in the shag bin. Uh, where's them weights? because I'm a sod for putting weights down and standing on and they go through my boot. So, see you in a bit. All right, let's get this chucked out. I ain't got much battery left. Right, that's all out. Right, I'll get this battery changed because it is on low. There's two rods out, they're both in different directions. So hopefully, of all hopes, it'll all be all right. And then we won't have any more mess ups. Two clicks. Right, we've got one out to the right, one out, and that is over to the left. 
this tide it's only a 6.14 but i tell you what this tide today is barreling in i've not ever known this so god knows what it'll be like next week with the big tides it'll be uh unfishable but it's barreling in <laughs> i've got no snags down there a couple down that way but right i'll get this battery changed get it, this battery charged and uh yeah my hip hurts but then you know about that did i mention about my hip did i tell you that i'd got a bad hip oh that's another thing flipping doctors I spoke to the doctor, but I'll talk to you about that in a minute. I've got to get this battery changed. So, see you in a bit. So we're on the third battery. Um, but like I say, it is, it is, probably feels like five degrees, something like that. We've now got two rods out. I put a new flapper rig on. These down there, I'll take the bait off and then I'll just cut them up at them. I've only just tied them as well, they're brand new fluorocarbon well jury's out on that at the minute seems to tangle up quite well seems a bit wiry to me whereas amnesia isn't but i'm going to keep giving it go i've got some thicker fluorocarbon now but i think that i don't know whether that isn't thicker stuff sort of like alters what people say about it but we'll see they need chopping up i ain't untangling that um yeah, I got a call back from a doctor, so I had my x-ray, and then I tried to book an appointment and couldn't book an appointment, which took me to the 18th of April. They said that they had no appointment, so I phoned the desk up and said, can you send me another app so I can try and do your job making an appointment for me to see a doctor? But you don't see a doctor, it's a call back. They obviously get paid for these calls, Hence, they're doing loads of callbacks because they're earning plenty of money, aren't they? And if they aren't, that's what I think anyhow. So shove it. You know, it is what they did during the cough season, weren't it? Anyhow, I then phoned up and they then gave me an appointment for Wednesday just gone, yesterday, which was the 6th of March. So, half past nine, phone rings. I can't understand him, can I? And I said to him four times, can you please take the phone away from your mouth? Have it further away from you when you talk to me because I cannot understand what you're saying. It was like white noise. It was all breaking up like that because he had it too close. Um, I just couldn't hear him. And he was saying, and I was constantly saying, pardon? What? And it makes me feel bad. So I told him, four times I told him, the last time I was quite stern, I'll tell you. Anyhow, he went, is that better? I said, well, it is if you have now moved it away and that's what is happening. Anyhow, he spoke to me. He told me what's wrong with my hip. Basically, it's fucked. But I can't remember what he said it was. Now, if I was sat beside my doctor, he'd have read it on a bit of paper for me, wouldn't he? Well, if it was my doctor, I'd understand him for a start. I miss my doctor. I dream about my doctor once I've dreamt. That might sound a bit sad, but it affects your life quite a lot, doesn't it? Because we're all going to die a lot younger because our NHS system is now a third world country. That's just my opinion. But um, this is going into a bit of a rant, isn't it? Anyhow, he phones me up. We have a bit of to and fro, as in me getting a bit irate with him. And he's telling me what it is. And he then says to me, I'll make you an appointment with a specialist. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I can pick where I want to go for a referral, it's called, mate. Not, I'll make you an appointment for a, a specialist. No, I don't think you can, he says. I said, you don't, what? I can be referred wherever I want to go in my catchment area. No, I don't know. I don't don't know. Anyhow, well, it was like this then. And in the end, he says, I'll get the secretary to phone you. I says to him, whilst you're in front of the computer, what did the swab come back that they took out of my ear with all my ear aches? What did that come back? Oh, you'll have to phone reception up to ask about that. 
I see you got, got a computer in front of you with my records on there. Now you'll have to speak to reception. They only want to deal with just whatever it is they're phoning up about because they get paid for it. Otherwise, you'll have to make another appointment and they'll get paid for that one as well. When I went and saw the doctor, who was a locum, on a Saturday afternoon, soon as I started talking about my tablets, he said, oh, you'll have to see your doctor. I ain't got a flipping doctor. My doctor has retired. I don't blame him either. Anyhow. <coughs> that's where we're at at the minute. So I'm waiting for an appointment now, or a phone back from the secretary. As if that's going to happen. They're just absolute arses. Our doctor surgery ain't owned by the doctors anymore. It's owned by a, uh, an organisation. Welby Clinic, I think they are. Well, whatever they are, they're an organisation. And you're not telling me that they take that on out of the goodness of their heart to make sure that we've got a doctor surgery. Now, they take these surgeries over because there's profit in it. And that's what they do to the detriment of us. Now, if I have anything else go wrong with me, how hard it is to get into the doctors now is an absolute shambles because I'm just gonna die younger. I'll either die of uh, prostate cancer, of which I'm on the tablets already, or I'll have a heart attack because there'll be no way of uh, getting in to see your doctor. You have to go to A&E. And when you go to A&E, you have to argue the toss that while you're there and not at your doctors it's absolute shit show you can't see a doctor you get a phone back appointment i think the life expectancy in my opinion my life expectancy has dropped so thank you very much uh the conservative party and thank you very much the labor party because you're all to blame it's been going on for decades getting worse you're all the same ass cheek aren't you of the same ass yeah one is one side one's the other side you're all shite and whilst we got thousands and thousands of legal 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 immigration what's going to happen they aren't built look i'll tell you this for now you might say, oh, it's nothing to do with legal immigration because there's hundreds of thousands of them. Forget the 50, 60,000 coming in on the boats that you know nothing about. It's the legal ones as well. And they're dependents because they need a doctor's appointment, don't they? I don't need one. They need one or a dentist. I'm all right for dentists because my dentist, I actually pay for it. Well, the wife pays for it. I think she still pays for the kids as well. I'm not sure. But, you know, at least we've got a dentist. So when I'm dead, my teeth will still be going like this, like it are now. Absolute shit show. And the reason why I'm saying all of that coming into the country, they aren't building doctor surgery one after the other, the same as they aren't building extra hospitals, the same as they aren't building extra prisons, the same as they aren't increasing the police force, because whatever they've took on, they sacked beforehand, and the ones they sacked were the proper policemen, ones that actually did the job. That's another rant. I could rant about all of it, different bits. Anyhow, let's take my ear, my ear. Four air aches I've had, I've had one in that ear, I've had three in that ear, and this ear has been a right pain. And I have had over two weeks of amoxicillin. And I think today is the first day. Now I still got fluid in there. Right on the inside of my ear. But it feels better today. So hopefully it's coming, I'm coming out of it. But it'll just go in reverse and I'll be back there and I'll say, you seen your doctor? Have I seen my doctor? I'll tell you what it's like going in at the hospital. You go into the hospital, I've been told it's 20 past seven. Yeah, you shut at eight. Yeah, but um, they're, they're a bit busy. And uh, right, okay, I'll come back tomorrow. Don't worry about it, I'm just in pain. I'll come back tomorrow. When I went in there for this first conversation, there's a receptionist and a nurse. And the nurse was sat on the chair with her feet up on the counter. 
They came down as soon as I come in, but I saw her feet on the counter. The next time I go in, she's in there again. The same two suspects, feet on the counter again. She didn't take them down this time. And I says, can I have an appointment? Can, can I uh, see, see a nurse please about me here? And she says, I'm sorry, but they're a bit busy at the minute. I said, but it's 10 past seven. Yeah, they're a bit busy. They've got a lot of paperwork to do. I've never known a nurse not see the patient and then spend half an hour doing the paperwork before they call the next person in. So I says, all oh, right, so I ain't gonna, well, I can make you an appointment and we can see if you can get in. I said, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. I'll come back another time. A week later, I come back about me here. This time I am seeing them. And the nurse, the one, you know, the one with the feet on the counter, she weren't there. So obviously it weren't a shift this week. Anyway, I got seen that time, got the tablets. Didn't even get charged for the tablets. The nurse just chucked me the tablets and I walked off and says, right, I'll just take these then. He went, yep, yeah, finish the course. And then I went back again, where I then had this swab done. And they said to me, I'll phone you on Saturday. And I said, you'll phone me? You'll actually phone me and tell me the results? Yep, your number's on there. I'll just ring that number. I thought you patronizing. I'll ring that number and I'll tell you results. Well, Saturday came and went. Maybe I thought, well, hang on, she might phone me Sunday. Now that came and went. I still haven't heard. So I don't know whether I'm on the right antibiotics because it ain't clearing it up. Anyhow, that's that done. So what do I think of the NHS? Well, if you've got um, cancer and you've been caught in time and you're in treatment, fantastic. Same for heart, fantastic. If you get seen in time and get caught in time. If you uh, get put into A&E because you've been injured, fantastic. You go through your doctor's surgery if you can get past a receptionist. If you can get past the nurse and actually see a doctor to then get on the system, well, good bloody luck because the NHS in that department is shocking. And I've, even when I had an operation a few years back, I went over to, I had the operation, I was in a right bad state. And I say, I, I, I've been told I'm going now. I said, who's going to take these bandages off? Oh, you just go in the toilet and take them off. Go in the toilet and take them off. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm sure there's loads of bad stories out of the NHS and I'm sure there's loads of good stories. But what there isn't, there isn't enough NHS. And it ain't about bloody more money, this, that and the other. They should sort it out in whatever way it needs. Sack the management and get the bloody work done. I don't even understand why now, in this day and age, we haven't got hospitals that are on motorways, A roads like the A1 or something like that, main trunk roads, and there's a huge hospital built. So you get a ticket, right, you go to this on this day, this time, and you literally, it's like a drive through. So you drive, park, in, reception, boom, scene, operation, whatever it is, out in your car and off you go. It's about time we had that sort of system because we aren't a third world country, are we? Oh, hang on. We're becoming a third world country, aren't we? Well, that was a bit of a, I feel a bit better now. I've got about five things on my mind going round. I ain't talking about any others. That's because I tangled this rig up. Look, that was, what on earth is that? Me squid's caught a stone, look. Look at that. Anyhow, to anyone out there that really loves the NHS and it's brilliant, I'm sure there's loads of it. Like I've just said in that conversation I've just had. And I'm sure there's as many woeful stories as well as there is as many um, positive stories. But that's just my take on it since bloody September last year with this air rate. I've had air rate since September. Can I get to see a doctor now? Do you know what I'm gonna do when I vote this year? This will be the first year I vote. Well, I always vote. This will be the first time I've ever done this. I am literally gonna write over my ballot and spoil it because I've found out that the MPs get these ballots, who are they for? 
whoever you vote for, they get the ballot to read. Now you might chuck it in the bin and think, oh, I'll just put them in the bin. But I'm gonna write on that exactly what I think. I'm gonna be in that booth voting for flipping ages. Cause I'm gonna write an essay all over it. Will it get me anywhere? No, of course it won't get us anywhere. Will it make me feel better? Too bloody right it will. And that's what it's about. Look after yourself and make sure you feel all right. That's it. And fishing does that. Anyhow, that's it. That was a good one. I enjoyed that. Uh, there's loads more I could say, but I ain't going to. Let's get back onto the fishing. Because there's going to be someone saying, is this a fishing channel? Is this a fishing channel? <coughs> of course it's a fishing channel. This is what we do when we fish. This is what it's like getting up the slope, look. line there on this rod is tugged right round. They both have. I've casted down there. And it's over there. So I'm hoping I don't get tangled up again. Let's just check these lines. Yeah, I won't get tangled up. It's all right. I thought it was further. I thought this right hand rod was right over there, but it isn't. Been over there before in a video and that weren't good either, was it? Camera seems to be a bit lopsided. A bit like my face in the mirror when I wake up in the morning. When you're like that. And then uh, an hour later you look at your face in the mirror and it looks a bit firmer, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. Well, I'm sorry about the uh, bit of a story and bit of a ranty story. I'm sorry about that, but this is what my channel's about. I think people subscribe and then they get that sort of stuff, what I've just done there. And then they think, oh, I'm unsubscribing. What's he all about? Well, it's about life, isn't it? And you might not agree with my opinions. You might think I'm totally wrong. You might think I'm a gammon or whatever, but there's a lot of us like this and there's a lot of people many many thousands and millions of people in this country that are like this i think perhaps not exactly like me but think a bit like the, me or think the same or have the same struggles and uh yeah come t you come fishing if i had a mate with me i'd be chatting to him about it wouldn't i if uh, I was on my own and not filming, I'd probably be talking to myself like I am now whilst I'm fishing, murmuring and moaning and groan to myself. You know, I don't just moan at the missus, and she certainly don't moan at me anymore, I'll tell you. Anyhow, it's, uh, this is what my channel is. It is my video. It is from me setting up here, casting out to finish fishing, and everything in between warts and all. If you are to go fishing with me, um, at the minute I ain't got time, but if, if I was to go fishing with you, yeah, I ain't gonna be any different to what I am on camera. And don't forget, every Wednesday at seven o'clock you get this. New video every Wednesday. I ain't missed too many, only when the cough was on. And anybody on uh, you watch YouTube a lot, if you haven't watched him before, I'm sure you probably have, look up Dr. John Campbell and read and have a listen to what he's got to say and all the doctors and physicians 
and specialists, what they talk to him about. It's a worrying state of affairs. But yeah, he's a good channel. Go check out, check out Dr. John Campbell. You don't need me shouting him out. He's a big channel. Isn't it good we caught a flounder? I give him a good chuck out and all because they have habit of going down onto the floor. And then as the tide go out, they still sat there like idiots. So hopefully, he'll have gone. But I shall check him out as that tide drops. Because I will fish the tide down a bit. Time now is... Quarter past four. Quarter past four. I don't know what time sunset is. It's going to be getting dark early tonight because it's overcast. But... Let's get you on these rods. As you can see, it's a bit grey. It's probably grey blue on the camera. Oh, is that a tug? Is that weed or a fish? <laughs> Verdict on the Ziplex TF5050. Well, of course I like it because I've already got one, already had one, didn't I? So I know exactly what the rod is, which is why I wanted it again. So thanks again, Billy. It's, uh, it was fantastic. You said that you didn't, you weren't going to sell it. You would have just kept hold of it. Thanks for passing it on to me. Um, I shall use it. Every time I'm in the river, I'll use that. Um, I've got other Ziplexes to use off the beach, and I've got my Kenzakis, which I'm looking forward to using on the beaches because I haven't, since Wivensy, I haven't been on the beach. But you can't do it all. And I'm certainly not going in this weather onto a bloody beach to freeze my nuts off. I'll leave that for others to do. As soon as there's a nice day and the tide is right, um, I shall be on the beach with my multis. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Well, this is where I am today. I don't know if I've given you a great big show round. It's a little bit choppy, nothing major. But yeah, let's get this rod in, the blue one. I can't remember. I'll know when obviously I'll watch it back. I can't remember if it was um, the new rod, the new Ziplex I got off Billy that I just caught the flounder on or not. So just had a nice chat with a bloke walking down the path because I said, what sort of dog's that? And he called it a mixie. I think it's got about six different breeds in it. So I don't know how that worked out. I thought it only took two to tango. But yeah, so I suppose if one dog's got a couple of breeds, another dog's got a couple of breeds, but it's a lovely little dog. Um, pure black. Right, let's get this blue rod in and check it. And when I watch this video back, I will find out which Ziplex it was. I think it was my red one. I hope it was, because then that's christened, isn't it? Right, let's get this blue one in. Uh, where shall I put you for the field of vu? Right, let's get it there. What we'll do is we'll move it about. Be weed on this, I reckon.
get you over here. Well, look at that shit. I'm just gonna cut that, get it dragged off. So that's what we're dealing with now. Tide's going out. There is no end of plastic on it. What are you gonna do about that, Greta? Fuck all, are you? Fuck all. going to be using I don't think I'm going to be using this fluorocarbon anymore I think it was a waste of fucking money I've just had to cut that off because it's wrapped round my swivel to the point where you wouldn't get it off so that's another rig that's three rigs buggered now we'll cut this I think I'll put this rod to bed. I was going to cast it back out. What a load of crap. I'll tell you what I'm doing with my reels now. Um, I've got all the gear to do it. I have.
I've got all the gear to do it. Um, on these live liner reels, I was going to just do it when I went to Galston and fished the river there. But what I'm going to do, am I in frame there? Of course I am. Always am. Yeah. What I'm going to do, I'll get there in a minute. I've got some Trabuco line. It's high strength, it's pre-stretched. It's high strength, low diameter. So I think it's something like 0.4 millimeter, but it's 66 pounds breaking strain. And for another head thump at the river, at Galston or here, it's perfect. So I'm gonna, I've got two new spills for them reels. I'm gonna get them lined up. I was gonna just do it for when I went to Galston, but <coughs> if I come here and it's like that then you don't cast out very far do you at all you just say oh, I'm gonna fish close in because of all the weed don't you that's what happens so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spool it up with a 66 pound braking strain it's clear and fish it straight through be perfectly all right for another red thump just out there a little bit and if there's loads of weed on it, I just cut the swivel off, drag it all off, retie it on, and bang, I'm out again straight away. And it'll save so much time. So that's what I'm gonna do with these reels at this fishing mark as well, or any mark. Whenever I take these reels, I'll take the spare spools with me. So yeah, I was gonna rebate rig that one up. But what I'll do is, well, shall I rebate it up anyhow? Only got to tie a swivel on and put that rig on, cast it out, and then that'll be the last one. Because if I bring the other one in, me Billy Ziplex, yeah, um, I then got to clear all the plastic off, get the rig on, cast out. So I might as well do it now, maximize fishing. But the tide is going down now. We will be down to the seaweed and the mud. It's very muddy over there. The other time when I was last here, where go back in my videos, it'll be in February, um, all the mud had been ripped out. But now we've got sediment mud been dropped there. So it's always changing the river. Sometimes it'll be muddy and weedy, and other times it'll just be muddy and uh, other times it's clear stones it all depends on what the tides are like if you get big tides rip through it clears all the mud and that away so right i'll get i'll bring you back and you'll see what i'm doing see you in a bit right well i tied the tied the swivel back on i tied the swivel back on we ain't got the light on them I've tied the swivel back on, so uh, we'll chuck this one out. I think we're going out far. Yeah, I didn't chuck it out for no point with all that really. plastic mess rubbish. See, now that's all gone to f cock, hasn't it? I think that's all tangled round the fucking shoreline. Now I've got to go have a look.
All caught round the bloody bladder rack, in it? That happens. Should have kept my. Oh, you fucker! I should have kept the rod up high. It's hard fishing today. You wouldn't think it. It's not that windy. Matter of fact, where's the wind gone? The wind has gone. They didn't get that right, did they? So yeah, if the line drops on top of the water here, that bladder right there just it grips it. So when you reel in, the line is going through the bladder rack. And that's why you have to change your lines regularly. Really. This Ruvex number 10 times 10, it's a fantastic line. I've never had a problem with it. Never had it breaking unless I snap it. Um, been really good line and it is good line swear by it um, but yeah you got to watch that um, it's a bit like uh, I guess Chesil Beach if you don't keep your lines up high the uh, or check your baits a lot it gets washed under all the gravel did that with me at um, oh, where did I fish in Devon the second video anyhow I forget what it's called Babacom, no Babacom anyhow yeah air rich then so yeah I need to be careful of that but hopefully that will stay there <sighs> yeah so we'll keep watching these rods and uh, someone's just rung me the electrician's just rung me so I need to speak to him and I need to change this battery as well so I'll speak to you in a bit it shows it's cold because these batteries I'm going through these batteries quite quickly so change this battery I'll bring you back when I reel these in that'll be the end of the video because uh, I ain't fishing much longer so only wanting to come out for a short session and uh, I've had a fish so I'm quite happy been nice it's been calm and i am so calm now it's unbelievable you might not think it watching this video but yeah no it's been nice it's been enjoyable um yeah just what the doctor ordered if you can see one swung right round now i reckon it's got weed all on it so this is the uh red tf 5050 Yeah, it's got shit loads of weed on. What a disgrace. Gonna catch in all the stones. Look at that washing line. Jesus Christ, this is why I'm gonna do what I said I'm gonna do with them other spills.
No, we've had nothing but weeds since last year, really. It's been atrocious, to be honest. Now we're caught round a tree. Look at the state of this shite. Yeah, because it really slows down well, doesn't it? Caught on a tree. That's that rod put away in it. Wound in a bit more. Right, I've got nothing on that. That's out of the water. So I'll take my scissors. And take my scissors and chop the end off and cut the rig
amount of times my uh, hip hurt back then. Got all this fucking line with this shit on it. Put that in the bin. I've got my weight over here, I chucked. Can't see where that went. See that because oh yeah I know because you're an idiot. Well, that weren't hard work reeling that line in, was it? Because of the plastic and the fucking weed. I'm glad I enjoyed this session. It's been right enjoyable. Had a right laugh. Fucking. Right, I'm gonna tie this on. Oh, you. I'm gonna tie this on. Yeah. Right, quickly. All right, let's get this last rod reeled in. You'll see me in a minute. It's caught all underneath that seaweed. I'm gonna fight this, isn't it? There'll be weed on it as well. But that's fishing, isn't it? That's fishing.
an absolute shit show. Look at this. And I knocked most of it off. That was only 30 yards out. Fucking blind every fucking way. Yeah, I'm swearing and I don't give a damn. You see, you got weed on the beach, which you just reel in and you can walk up the beach and get it out and then cut it and drag it off. And then you got plastic. Look at that on the tip of the rod. Plastic, has that just turned off? Are you fucking joking? No. Right, that's my ears. I can't air properly. Yes, line, I can hear whistling. So, yeah, then you got plastic and weed air, plus your weight get jammed in all them rocks down there, plus it's full of mud, so you get lathered up, it's slippery. I'm dodgy with my hip anyhow. You slip like that and it hurts your hip. It's, why do we do it? Because we enjoy fishing. And not only we enjoy fishing, I enjoy being in surroundings like this. But I've now got to clear all that shite off there. I'm just cutting the line. This is why I'm getting them spills spilled up with that 66 pound line and I'm fishing it straight through. Don't care. It's what I bought them for. But yeah, no weed at all on the flood, but on the return, it's terrible. But yeah, anyhow. We haven't blanked, we caught a flounder, I didn't measure it, it was nice and fat, it was nice flounder. So that's the main thing. I've come here, I've enjoyed myself. You might not think it, but I have enjoyed myself. Um, I don't enjoy that. I don't mind if it's just weed. I don't mind if it's on a beach so it don't get caught in all the stones. But when you get that, and then you have to clear it, and then reel it in, then pull up your line, it's all tangled everywhere. Just gonna cut it, I round my reel, Bin it all and tie new on and then it gets caught on the stones that's the final nail in the coffin and I ain't got long to wait for that coffin either have I anyhow don't unsubscribe just because you've seen that there are people like me that fly off the handle and have got an opinion be a dull old world if it weren't so this has been fishing on the river umber and i've enjoyed it the wind has dropped now it is more pleasant now yet again yet again than it was when i started so um i'm gonna get this all tied away with caught a flounder i've enjoyed myself it's been a great day it's been reasonable weather it's certainly better than what it schedules it is for tomorrow and the weekend so this is the, what it's all about, coming out when it's better. And hopefully, spring's on its way, it'll start warming up as well. So I'll get this crap off here and uh, catch me in the next one. I'll be either uh, on the bays, in the river, or if it's good weather, you never know, I might be on the beach, but I doubt it, because it's still too bloody cold. So thanks for watching. Click and subscribe. If you don't want to, thank you for the view. I'll see you in on.
mostly this week I've been painting with water-based gloss 